Hi, I'm Sarah. We're, I don't know exactly in which week, of the Tidy Docs um, book club, but we're having a look at Purr. And this week specifically, we're having a look at Map 2 and PMAP. I'm just going to start my sharing my screen. Um, there we go. Can you actually see it? Um, oh, yeah, now you can. Nice. So I built a small presentation around this. Um, so I had a look at uh, both the documentation for MAP2 and PMAP, um, but I also hooled around a bit for tutorials and, and stuff, how to use it. Um, and also, this is on my second screen, so I won't be looking at the camera the whole time, but um, yeah, just for your information. So there's um, there's two functions we're looking at. Um, the first one is MAP2, the other one is PMAP, and they're very similar to MAP. Um, only that you can put in more than just one list. So for map two, as the name says, it's two lists or vectors. And then with PMAP, you can take as many as you want. Um, but the syntax is just slightly different in that case. So we're going to have a look at um, map two first. And the approach, as I said, is very similar to maps. So instead of um, just having one uh, column that you're mapping over, you're, you have two columns, and then you put them into your function um, as inputs. Um, yeah, and also as with map, there's a couple of variations. So there's just map two, which uh, outputs a list, and then you have map two logical integer double character, where it outputs a vector um, of that specific type. Um, and then there's map two underscore vec where you can put in the P type. I think that's handy for stuff like dates, but honestly, I haven't tried it out. Um, and then there's also walk to, um, yeah, which is just along the same. Um, so the important stuff for dot X and dot Y for the arguments is that they should have the same length, otherwise it just returns an error. The only thing is if one of them has length one, then it's gonna be recycled. So I don't really know why he would use map two in that case, but at least it doesn't throw an error. And what's fun as well is that you have the progress bar. So if you have something that takes forever, then you can um, have a progress bar that you can also name. Um, yeah. And so we, we already had a look at like dot x dot y dot progress. Uh, what we haven't had a look at yet is dot f and dot dot dot. And so the authors, uh, recommend against using the dot 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 syntax at all. So where you would like usually do um, this uh, map paste and then in the dot 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 you would put in the collapse. And instead they recommend uh, just using anonymous functions and within these anonymous functions to put those uh, arguments in. Um, I don't, yeah, which if, if they think that's better, then suppose you could go along with that. Um, and last week we were talking about that it makes, uh, or that it's a bit easier to like read the code when when we do it with like this sort of anonymous function. So that's why I um, refactored it. So this is uh, just a map, not a P map, but um, still it's um, just in their documentation. Um, and this is directly from the documentation of MAP2, um, uh, an example where we're predicting values. So the first thing that we're doing is we're getting data, uh, empty cars, and then we split that up by the cylinder into three or four lists. I don't know how many cylinder values there are. Um, and then we first map over it with just a simple map. Uh, and we do a regression for every single one of the split up lists. And then we go over it with map two um, and we try to predict it. Uh, we, we predict the values that we got from our regression. So the dot X is the mods, which was the original data. The dot Y would be like the, the regression that we just did and then with a function we predicted. And this is just the output from like the fourth list. So that in that case, it seems quite handy. And I also found a neat shortcut. 
um, where you can use uh, map to within uh, mutate and then you don't have to use row wise. Um, so, and it works because tibbles and data frames are lists and then they are vectors um, we can just put into map to. So I, I created a, a data frame here, which is just some numbers. And then we can just see in comparison the row wise approach and the map to approach. So with a row wise, we'd have to use row wise, then we mutate and then we ungroup. Whereas if we go with, mute, uh, with map two, we can just go directly with mutate and then map two will just do it per row. Um, yeah, so we save two lines of code, um, which is which is neat, I think. And you can't forget to ungroup, which is probably also handy. Yeah, so that's that for what I wrote down for a map to. Do you have any questions so far? Comments. I really, I really like the. Uh... The use of use of uh, yeah, there's the shortcut here. That's really cool. I may well do that in future. <laughs> yeah, I found that. I was like, this is so cool. And then this week I was using it, and I, I felt really yeah, I felt so advanced. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Since there's no other questions, I'll go just continue. So PMAP um, is just basically the same as map and map two, but you can put in as many vectors or lists as you want. So yeah, the, this figure looks very similar to the one that we had before. So it also stole from somewhere. So here we have two vectors and then we put them into functions. And then for PMAP, we can have three vectors or lists or more. Um, but what changes here is that we like, they get turned around by like 90 degrees. Um, so we have this, this first one is still the same, but then like the list doesn't go um, horizontally, but you have to like transpose it. So that's just a bit, uh, sometimes you have to keep in mind, I think with PMAP um, that, yeah, it, it turns around. Um, yeah, and this is basically, if you just put in two lists, then it works the same as map two. So it's just really because they didn't want to make functions for map three, map four, map five, and so on. Um, yeah. So there's variants again, and they're exactly the same as before. So we have PMAP, which returns a list. Um, and then we have um, PMAP logical integer double and character, which return vectors um, of the name type. And then we have dot underscore vec, which again, it's probably nice if you have some uh, funky class that you want to return, like dates or I don't know, some class that you build with yourself. Mm. So for the dot L, that's the first argument in here. It's the same again. So um, all of the list elements that we put in have to have the same length. Uh, in map two, it was just dot X and dot Y that have to have the same length. Um, here, it's all of the arguments, uh, all of the lists that have to be the same length. And again, um, if there's a vector of length one, then that will be recycled. And here you can see how that would make more sense because then you can still have like, I don't know, two or three lists that you put in that have the same length and then one extra one um, that gets recycled. Um, and instead of making a list of lists or a list of vectors, uh, we can also input a data frame and then, um, yeah, the function is applied row wise. And basically, um, we have a list of all of the vectors within our data frame. Um, yeah, so here's the part. So um, with dot f, we have to input as many arguments as we have in dot l. So for example, if in the list we have a, b, c, d, then the function also has to have either a, b, c, d as explicit arguments or at least like some uh, four arguments that we can work with. But if our list has like too many arguments, uh, if our list dot L has too many vectors within it, then in the function, we can use this dot 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 syntax to absorb them. 
and this I think this makes sense if you want to use it within um, a data frame um, because then sometimes you just have variables that you don't want to use in the function but that you still have to deal with in some way. Yeah, so how exactly does it work to match the, the list elements with dot f? So there's there's um yeah, so there's this option of um writing a function and you call it CBA, for example, and then they do something, and then the first um the first element in our list, which is a list of A, B, and C. Um, oh, sorry, going to start again. So our list is called, it has three elements. The first one is A, the first, second one is B, the third one is C. Um, and so they get matched within this function. So if they are called exactly the same as the, in the function, then they get like uh, matched. If they're not called exactly the same, so if we had a list of just X, Y, and Z, um, then it would just go like by position. So the first one would match to C, the second one would match to B, and the third one would match to A. So that's just something to keep in mind that may be handy to just call the function uh, arguments the same as what you're going to put into it. Mm. Yeah, um, I thought that, yeah. Here, yeah, yeah. I, I have confusion like, uh, why are we putting A is equal to X and why, why is not putting directly X, Y, Z into the P map? Mm, that's a good question. Like is it, it is making a list by combining a name, the list or something? Say uh, that again. I mean, it it is like a making a list inside the list. Yeah, yes. the L, L is kind of combination of the lists. List yeah. of lists, then, yeah. Yeah, list of lists. And then it is putting the names of the elements of that list into the function. So I was thinking like why it is uh, naming the list and not directly putting the X, Y, Z. Uh, I would think you can do it directly as well. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I think the difference would be doing that dot X dot Y. Like you'll have to, um, I'll have to look up the, uh, syntax for pmap specifically, but I think you can you can pass that dot x equals dot y equals and you know those kind of things and then that's what you would pass to your function. Actually, I'm not uh, yeah. certain if dot x will work. Um, just... Yeah, with, so with pmap, it's it's like dot dot one dot dot two dot dot three instead of um dot x and dot y. So you say to it like right, dot dot yeah. one is this first thing oh, make that yeah, this other thing that's why mm -hmm. because when you're passing okay. your arguments to the function instead of doing so dot dot one dot dot two might not be as uh, you know intuitive to look into that that mm -hmm. the reason why. okay 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 yeah, okay now we understand why to do that okay this works as well right this is what you were talking about right Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I think it's it's a bit easier to read if you go with uh, with actual names. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Okay. And yeah, so this is from the documentation again, and I think it's really yeah, it's really out there. Um, so basically, we're making a data frame, and from this, in the the first um, column in this data frame is what we actually want to like the art, or what we actually want to mutate or what we're interested in, and the next three rows are just um, other arguments that we want to input into the function, um, and we call them exactly what what we need in GSub. So. Look at. Oh, so that didn't work. Never mind. Um, so I think that yeah. So I think uh, the arguments that you have to put into GSEP are called X pattern replacement and strings as factors. And since we call them exactly like that, 
uh, we can just map over our fruit data frame and put in GSAP and then that just works. So I think that's, yeah, I don't know how exactly I'll use it, but it's, it's kind of cool. Um, and then I found a, a, a shortcut again uh, for data frames. Um, so if we need more than just two function, uh, two variables, um, where we can just use pmap, um, sorry, map2, um, we can also go with pmap. Um, so one way is um, to simply pipe um, the data frame directly into pmap and then call a function. But then we can't use mutate. Um, but at least we don't have to specify the column names there. So that's that's nice. Um, and if we want to use mutate, then we have to list all of the column names that we want to work with, um, but at least we can use mutate. So um, again, uh, an alternative to row wise, um, but with more than just two arguments. And you can see here that, yeah. Yeah, so the first one is interesting. Um, so you don't have to pass, you know, dot L has nothing. So which means it's going to default to creating a list of all the columns mm -hmm. or all the integer columns automatically and give you the max of that. Nice. Yeah. You know, this can, you can do this. Cool, cool. Yes, yeah. So if, yeah. If, if you had columns in there that are not integers, it would still try to use them, right? Like it won't. It, it, it could... would, but I don't know if it would actually work. Um, so... But the, the the int bit specifies like the output rather than it filters the inputs for you and then gives you an output. I tried using it and I think it threw me an error. Yeah, it should because it won't be oh. able to coerce them. Ah. You need to load a tidyverse and stuff again. Right. Um. Uh, Oh. oh, yeah. So, and then it throws an error can course from a string to an integer vector. Uh, yeah. But if you did only pmap? Uh, it works, but this is not the expected answer, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the strings are evaluating to higher than any of those integers. And that's one. Yeah. That's probably in like advanced R or something somewhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. yeah, but it would work in here, right? So you can just put in all of the uh, all of the column names, and then you can just use the dot 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 syntax to absorb like what you don't want, and then this should throw an error. Yeah. So I think that combination is maybe useful where if you have like, for example, a character vector or another vector that you don't want to use for some reason, um, you can still keep your data set. Um, yeah, but using an anonymous function. Okay. Yeah, so, and then I have a look at um, an exercise from advanced R solutions. Um, where they were also talking about pmap and map2. And so they they showed this um, code chunk um, where basically we're, we're using map2 in a specific way. Um, and then well maybe I'll just I'll just open it here because then you can see all of it. So um, this is the part where we're doing it in, in map two, and this is where we're doing it in, in map just. So we, we have a list where we put in two functions that we want to use. Um, and then we, we take out their names. 
and then we use map two on it and then magic happens. What? Interesting. Yeah, that didn't work. Oh, well, I'll go back um, because it actually has to output here. Um, and so, um, yeah, we're, we're using this list as a .x input. We're using our empty cars, but just the specific um, columns as our .y input. And then we use the function on the variable. Um, so we're basically using .y on .x and that works pretty well. Um, and if we don't want to use map to, but map instead, then the option would be to still like have the same fun uh, function list, which is called trans, but then the whole output, just um, the whole function thing just looks a bit messier because we can't, um, yeah, because we don't have two inputs. So basically we're accessing the function that we want to use through the double, um, through this notation anyways. Um, and then we're finding the column that we need to um, mutate on um, also through this notation. So it's a bit chunkier and it doesn't read as nicely, but it still works. Um, yeah, so I just thought that's interesting also to, to see that you can do it in different ways. Um, you don't have to uh, use so many arguments, um, but it's just a bit easier to read if you if you compare it. This function is just a lot easier to read than than this function. Yeah. Okay. If that's that's all I prepared. So um, yeah, if you have questions, just let me know. Or if there's anything else you guys want to discuss. No, really good. Uh, lo loads of stuff um, in Thrin, like speedy. Um, what I was thinking though is like, do people, do we want to add like an element of tidy R into these per docs and do some work with like nested tibbles and maps? Because uh, especially for like modeling, if you've got like a tibble of your data and then you've got a crossing grid of your hyperparameters and stuff, it really helps to just use a PMAP on that whole structure. Um, I was just wondering if, what do people think about like merging other packages and workflows to like bring out more use cases for, for map to and map and PMAP and stuff. That sounds really cool. Yeah, it's like this kind of, um, this kind of example. Um, but say you've got like an argument with lots of parameters, um, or like you have to construct your own grid of like hyper parameters initially. And um, normally you do that, say, of tidy R, and then you use, use pair to like do it all in when you've got all the parameters. Um, I don't know. What do people think? I'd be interested. Sounds, sounds interesting. I'm not sure if it'd be close to kind of what I'm working with normally, but nevertheless interesting. Maybe we can add like some examples of that by someone maybe from you, Jack, because I am kind of lost what what kind of uh, <laughs> you're trying to say here? Like, because I do not have a personal experience with tidy R, that's why maybe. Yeah, so wait, let me try to explain a little bit what I mean. Say if you're like doing some machine learning or want to run a bunch of models and you're trying to do something like select the best hyperparameters, right? So like you've yes. got a bunch of different combinations. Yes. Okay. Easiest way, the easiest way you can kind of do that. All right. Let me just stop the recording so that everyone on YouTube doesn't have to hear all this. 